And before we get started with proper introductions, uh, I just wanted to bring this up to the, everybody that's listening right now. We're already in 2024. Just own the fact that we're we're already there, which is totally cool. And there is a unique opportunity that arises right now. This is going to be the year of database. Now, I hope that you're doing a lot of other things to generate business, at least have two places where your business comes from. But I want you to consider that everything goes back to your database. I am going to be spending time, energy, effort, and this will be a challenge for me, but I am committed to it, to making managing your database for everybody here on the call and everybody that's in the GPS group, I'm going to make it so simple and so easy to do that it would be it would be foolhardy not to do this, okay? My mission for you is to have your database where everything comes back to be a lead generation juggernaut for you by the end of the year. Right now, I challenge each and every person to go through their database. And if nothing else, what I want you to do is identify the people you actually like. The ones that are in your database, the top 50, top 100, maximum top 150. And if you do nothing else, Call them and wish them a very happy holidays. Tell them you were thinking about them. That in itself will do wonders for the first quarter of your year. And because there's going to be more that I'm going to be walk talking about and, and walking you through and having conversations on. Um, in fact, there'll be a uh, once a week mastermind group. If you're a database person, you're going to be, you just have to lock you in on that. Bottom line is this is mission critical for your success. Okay. Now, that being said, first off, good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here. It's great to see you all. If you can, put your faces on. It makes a big difference. We would like to see who we're talking to. I have Andy Coleman. He's one of our business partners. He is the number two agent in EXP Worldwide regarding closed transactions. He has iconed. Andy, how many times have you iconed? Uh, it, I mean, how, three, three years, right? Three, Yeah, three. Yeah, my first three years, basically. I missed my first three. one in three years. Yeah, just two in one year, actually. <laughs> okay, right, right. Yeah, because you had the opportunity to do so. So yeah, yeah. there are some strategies that he's going to lay out, and I'm really going to kind of just turn it over to him. And I've got my iPad here, so I'm going to take some notes as well. Uh, but one thing I want you guys to notice, this isn't by accident. This is when he shows up, when he and I are having a conversation and we're talking. And, and by the way, I should say this because this is this character quality here. Anybody in our partnership, you can have a conversation with. You just need to reach out and say, Andy, I got some questions. I want to know more about it. He's got so much knowledge and he's such a caring, giving person. But what I want you to notice is, look where he is. He's actually like, he shows up like that for conversations with me when we're just really kind of BSing back and forth and, and checking in on each other in a completely professional environment, completely ready to go. Andy, close your ears. Don't listen to this. Don't don't listen to this. Seriously, just go like this, all right? He won't. Do, there you go. Yeah, he's not listening. Watch how he uses his hands. He communicates on so many different levels. All right, you're good, Andy. Thank you. You can pull back. You're good. So just be observant of that. And it's all because he's a professional and you're a professional. And now the question I have is not so much our backdrop because he's also very, very powerful in YouTube, which I hope he'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but when he's when he shows up, he shows up on purpose. Uh, little things, little subtleties make a huge difference in communication. I happen to know him as probably one of the best salespeople I've ever talked to in my life. Uh, I also count him as a friend. He's done a remarkable job building a YouTube channel and some real social media stuff, as well as iconed three times. So folks, without further ado, I'm glad you all are here. Please take some notes. Get your faces on if you're able to pay attention to this because there's some good stuff. Andy, God bless you, brother. Thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate you coming here. Uh, thank you so much, George. Um, that was very kind. Uh, best salesman uh, that you've ever met. And, and you've been doing this a long time. So uh, that means a lot to me. Uh, and guys, you know, um, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, so yeah, a lot of you guys know me. My name is Andy Coleman. Um, I am the rental expert probably on planet Earth. I don't think there's any human alive that's done more rental deals than me this fast. Uh, truly. And I've asked 
CEOs and I've asked, you know, 30, 40 year experienced agents and nobody has been able to tell me that they've done more deals than me. So um, yes, I think I am the leading authority on speaking about rentals and just closing this much volume of deals this fast, right? So Georgia mentioned before, you know, I've iconed three times and iconing to me is extremely easy. Uh, today's call, I kind of want to do it a little bit different because I've talked so much about my rentals and what I've done. You know, I mean, I'm going to give you a brief little rundown just in case you haven't heard. I've closed over 700 deals in the past three and a half years. I've made over $1.6 million in net commission. That's net commission. Okay. Uh, I've, I've done, uh, let's see, three times icon. Uh, like I said before, I'm on the Florida AAC for EXP. That's the Agent Advisory Council. Uh, so I'm in direct communication with the leadership with the XP. I created a team this year and now I have three agents directly working under me, uh, for me, basically, with me, if I could say. Um, and I'm bringing on more every single week. I'm literally bringing on agents every single week. Then I have agents on my team. I created the Andy Coleman team. Uh, what else? What else? What else? YouTube channel. I created a YouTube channel, which is blowing up right now. Instagram. I have like almost 7,000 followers on Instagram in like six months. Um, I've done a lot, guys. I've done a lot. Okay. My best month ever in real estate. And I've only been doing this three and a half, four years at this point. Best year or best month ever was $137,000 uh, in commission, okay? And I think the profit on that was like one hundred and thirty-two grand or, or something stupid like that. Uh, so, and, and this is all for rentals, okay? So I just wanted to give you guys a little preface of, you know, why I'm speaking to you right now and my credibility. I don't even do this to brag. I'm literally telling you what's possible and why you should take my advice. Uh, there's a big saying uh, that, that I love is don't listen to somebody that's not where you want to be. OK, let that sink in for a second. OK, if you're talking to a McDonald's worker and they're and no offense to McDonald's workers, you know, because because we need them. Uh, but if they're trying to tell you how to run your business, how to make a lot of money, you're not going to listen to them. They have no clue what they're talking about. They've never done it. OK, uh, I've done it. OK, and I've done it multiple times. OK, I've never had a year where I've decreased. Every single year since I started real estate, it's been an upwards climb. Even this year alone, like last year, I made 510,000. The year before that, 250 grand. Year before that, 80,000. That was my first year, right? This year on year number four, I'm about to do 750,000. I don't think I'm going to hit the million mark, but I will do 750. And this is in a time where most agents are going back, okay? I had the pleasure of speaking to the tattoo realtor. I don't know if you guys know him. I think his name is uh, Justin something. Uh, got tattoos all over his face, right? Uh, exploded right out of the gate, just like me. Made about half a million dollars in his second year. Same thing as me. Guess what he made this year and the year before that, right when the market switched? He's negative. He, he created a team off of it and he's negative. He's been negative for over a year and a half. And I'm not talking shit about him. I'm just giving you a preface of the market's tough right now, okay? But not for me. The market's easy for me. This is the best market I've ever been in. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably at the point where you're kind of struggling right now. I don't like to use that word struggling that much, you know, because it's offensive. Uh, but you're just not doing the things that you should be doing to capitalize on the market that we're in. Now, what do I mean by that, right? So we're not in the buyer's market. We're not in the seller's market. That's clear as day. There's no debate about that. So what kind of market are we in right now? We're in a renter's market, of course. If people aren't buying or people are not selling, they need shelter. So what are they going to be doing? They're going to be renting. All right. I pivoted, you know, during the pandemic, literally during that pandemic. That's when I got my license was 2019. It was like December of 19. You know, three months later, we had the global pandemic, the coronavirus, and I pivoted and started working with renters like basically immediately because I realized as a new agent, I cannot compete with these listing agents that have been doing this for 20 years. They have this massive network. They've been sending out flyers, you know, nonstop spending tens of thousands of dollars on that. I couldn't compete with them. And I realized that. It would have been a slow grind up if I tried to compete with them. So I created my own lane. I created my own niche, okay? Because that's very important. You got to pick one niche and run with it. And truly, guys, I don't really care what niche that you choose. If you want to choose rentals, fantastic. I think that's by far the best niche to choose. And let me let me go back a little bit, right? Niche, niche, because that's very important. If you're sitting there wondering, what the hell is niche? What is he talking about niche, right? Uh, niche basically is picking one category of real estate, right? So you have real estate as a whole, you have your buyers, you have your sellers, and you have your renters, okay? You could do multiple different niches within those subcategories. So I call it like a niche, okay? So basically, let's say you're doing, you're looking for buyers, right? And you want to hold open houses, okay? Uh, obviously, if you're not getting the listing, you know, that's not getting, you know, that's not the listing side, the seller side, because uh, you're basically just doing a strategy where, let's say, 
you're reaching out to fellow exp agents and you're like okay you know i want to run your open house for you you know and you do like two or three of these a weekend okay that you're you're trying to get buyers right you're trying to get the agents that are coming to your open house and you're trying to get buyers out of them to build a database try to take them out and see more properties that is a niche an open house niche okay uh, another niche would be let's just say my rental strategy right i call it my any broker advertised strategy you know i call it my mls private owner strategy uh, my apartment locator strategy i have a couple little you know sub niche within that niche, but it's all focused around renters. And there's multiple ways to skin a cat. Like I can even go after renters in different ways as well. But again, I like focusing on one thing. Me personally, I only focused on the MLS private owner strategy. That's it. And it, for me, it was like any broker advertised. Obviously, that's just another way of saying getting permission from the listing agent. Uh, so that was my one niche that I, I, bro I literally broke it down. If you guys heard that, I broke it down to one specific lead generation skill. And that was going after these uh, properties, these properties on the MLS that I can say, hey, you know, listing agent, uh, can I market your property and throw it up on Facebook Marketplace? I didn't do the apartment locator strategy. I did that in the very beginning. You know, the whole pandemic hit and it was kind of like a little thing where they took away real estate commission, a uh, realtor commission. So I kind of pivoted over to the MLS strategy. So I just focused on that. That was it. That's literally all I did every single day. And let me tell you this too, because this is very, very important. Because like I said before, I don't care what niche that you choose. I do think rentals is the best niche, but let's say you wanted to do FISBOs or expires. That's also a pretty good niche to choose right now. I personally think that's great because you're going to have a lot of these agents. Let's just say it's an expired listing or canceled listing, whatever you want to call it, right? You have these agents that have no earthly clue what they're doing. What do they say? Like, 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 like 5% or 10% of the real estate agents do 90% of the work. Some saying like that, right? It's true because only the 10% know what they're doing. So most of these expires are canceled. These listings agents screwed up. Okay. <laughs> and they could not get that property sold. Hence, the property goes back in the MLS under like expired or canceled or something. So you have the opportunity to go in there and call those expired or canceled and be like, hey, I know what I'm doing. Let me try to sell your house. Let me give you a reasonable expectation of what you can get for the price because most agents will just tell people what they want to hear, right? Uh, so it doesn't work that way. You're not going to get the deal done. They're going to go canceled or expired. So you don't want to do that. So if you pick that niche, let's say, that would be a great niche as well because we're in a market right now where it's not a buyer or seller's market, okay? So if there's expired listings, that means they did a bad job doing it. I personally think that's probably the second best niche to choose right now. I think rentals number one. I think like expireds, cancels, even Fizbo's, you know, is going to be right there, uh, right below it because you have these uh, owners that think they could do it themselves, but they have no earthly clue how to sell a house. You know, I'm not going to go to a lawyer and be like, let me, let me, let me run your next case for you with zero lawyer experience. It doesn't work that way, right? They're the experts because that they put all their time, effort, and energy, and, and they've studied and they have their knowledge and they have their experiences doing that one thing you know, law. Okay. I don't know how to do that. These, these owners, they do the exact same thing. Okay. They think, Oh, it's selling a house is easy. I can sell it. No problem. And yes, maybe two or three years ago when the market was like, you know, uh, uh, listing listings for dummies, you know, anybody could put up a listing and sell it in like four seconds. The market's changed now. So all of these Fizbos now they're not selling their properties. Okay. I don't know what the average stats are, but I'm sure they're way lower right now of Fizbos that actually sell and Fizbos that actually don't sell. So I think that's another really good niche to go after right now. Now, listen, to be truthful, I've never really done this. I've dabbled around with it a little bit. What I've done though, is I've talked to the experts. Okay. I've listened to, I've studied and talked to the experts and my whole thing about me and, and why I'm so, you know, uh, unique. I'm a problem solver at a very, very high level. Okay. That if, if I were to have one superpower, it would be problem solving. Okay. I can see little things and, and make the connections and put them together and fix any kind of problem that I see. That's why I'm able to dissect and figure out different niches without really having done them and been in the trenches, okay? Uh, so that's why I say pick a niche. That's the one most important thing you could possibly do. If you get anything out of this call, it's pick a niche and stick with that one niche. I just had an agent the other day 
He told me, he's like, oh, uh, you know, I want to try your, your, you know, your, your, your rental strategy, right? So obviously I have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. So if you guys aren't subscribed to me, go on YouTube right now. It's just Andy Coleman. You type my name in, hit subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon. That's it, right? So I share a lot of my information about actually getting rental leads and closing rental deals. Now, listen, it's a tiny fraction of what I teach in my program, uh, but that's neither here nor there. This agent told me, I want to do rentals. I've been trying your strategy. I just got banned on Facebook Marketplace. I said, of course you got banned. You're probably not doing the right things, right? You're just starting off with, a, and I've got banned on Facebook Marketplace as well. When I was really uh, in the beginning, just starting out, you know, trying new things, it didn't work because I had to learn it through trial and error. So uh, I was like, of course you got banned. You know, you didn't reach out to me. You didn't try to ask me for my opinion or help you. You saw one little thing. I'll post on Facebook Marketplace, get leads, you know, close deals, make a lot of money. Great. Okay. That's a tiny fraction of what I actually teach and what I actually do. Uh, so I said, well, what else do you do? You know, if that's, you know, if that's going well for you, because he said it was going well before he got banned, he said he was getting leads handled over fist. Uh, but I said, what else do you do? He said, well, I, I'm, I'm an artist. You know, I teach, I teach uh, other, you know, artists how to play guitar or something like that. I was like, what do you mean? You, you So you're doing a real estate plus you're an artist. I said, no, I said, no, you're not going to succeed. I said, what's your goal? He's like, oh, I want to make over a hundred thousand a year. I said, do you really think that's going to happen if you're splitting your time between art and real estate? I said, absolutely not. He was doing the wrong things. Okay. He realized that. And he was like, whoa, he's like, you know what? You're right. Uh, Cause you can't be a jack of all trades and master of none. It's just not going to work. Work, right. You can make a nice living, maybe 50, 60 grand. Maybe you can hit the hundred grand doing that, but you're never going to hit the 250, the 500, the million plus. It's, it's never going to happen because you're not going to be the expert. You're not going to be the authority on that one thing. That's the ultimate goal. And that's what separates the very, very successful entrepreneurs from the other success or unsuccessful entrepreneurs that fail. And like 90% of businesses fail, 90% of realtors fail. Do you want to be in that category of that 90% that fail? I don't think anybody wants to be in that category. That's the reason why I started teaching my rental strategy. I literally want to flip that around. I want to go from 10% failure rate instead of 90% failure rate. And I want to take that average commission up. It's like, I think it's like $56,000 the last thing I heard. Somebody said that's wrong, but let's just go with that. I want to flip that around as well. I want to go to $110,000 for commission rate right there. So that's why I'm preaching my real estate strategy because it literally works. I've literally taught over 50 agents in the past few months, and they're all killing it right now, literally killing it. I have some agents that made $14,000, no, sorry, $13,000 in their very first month doing it, okay? I've had agents that, or her name was Jill, you, you probably might know her, uh, Jill Kravitz, uh, hopefully I could say her name, uh, she actually got a buyer out of the rental strategy immediately. I think it was like day three after a one-on-one -on -one session with me, she literally got a buyer out of it immediately. So that's the beauty of doing rentals and why I say rentals are so important when you're picking your niche. I think it's number one. You do also get buyers out of it. Now, like I said before, you know, oh, what the hell is he talking about, right? There's no buyers or sellers market right now. Obviously, listen, guys, there's always going to be buyers. There's always going to be sellers. I like to think of it this way, okay? There's like a flat line, like an average line of what's going to happen with the market with buyers, sellers, and renters. Okay. For renters in particular, that's flat line. It's never going to go below that flat line right there. It's always going to stay here. There's always going to be like an average amount of money you can make off of rentals. And it's never going to really go below that. Okay. It might be really good at some points. Like right now, it's amazing right now for renters. Like I'm like up freaking here on my flat line. And maybe when it switches to a buyer's market or seller's market, then it'll go back to like average. Right. Uh, but it's never going to go below average, but the buyer and seller market you're going to be at a flat line on the buyer and seller market, okay? And then what happens is when the market switches, when it's not a buyer's or seller's market anymore, that's going to drop below that flat line. And these real estate agents, like I said before, the tattoo realtor, you know, no offense to him because he's a great guy and he's going to figure it out. Uh, he's not making as much money now. And a lot of agents are not making as much money now because it goes below that flat line. They can't sustain the business that they were doing before. There's no like average on that because typically nobody needs to buy or sell right now. Now, now pay attention to that word need. Okay. When you need to do something, there's a sense of urgency. Okay. You have to have it. It has to get done. We need shelter. We need food. We need water. Okay. We don't need a Ferrari. Okay. You, you see what I'm saying here? So only the people that want want 
to buy and sell right now or buying and selling. And who is that? It's a very, very, very small, tiny percentage of people that want to buy and sell right now. So that's why that flat line, that's why it's actually lower right now. And you're not typically going to make an amazing living dealing with the buyers and sellers right now. Now, listen, obviously, if you get lucky, you get some amazing investor or this or that, you know, or you just have a massive business where you're doing a million dollars a year in the good times, then maybe it'll drop to like, you know, 250 this year, 300,000 this year. So you'll still make a good living, but you're not going to keep excelling and growing. So that's the problem. Okay. And listen, you don't have to, like I said before, you don't have to pivot to renters. I gave you another strategy, right? Pivot to Fizbo's, pivot to expires. If open houses are not a good strategy right now, and come on guys, let's, let's be reasonable, right? They're, it's not, it's not a great strategy right now. It's going to be a phenomenal strategy when the market switches over to a buyer's market. Obviously that's going to be an amazing strategy and that then, then it's going to overtake the Fizbo market, you know, at that point, but we're not there. We're not there yet. It might yeah. switch over within the next Oh yeah, George. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. But before we before you jump into the next topic, there's a couple of things that I wanted to I, I've got to bring up, and this is just so relevant. And you'll hear this again and again and again. And it's niching into different areas wherever you're going to be an expert. In, uh, and by the way, I put a link to Andy's uh, YouTube page in the chat, so just go there and click on it. You'll see all his videos. Uh, there's a ton of them. I think 159 videos on there. When we're talking about niching in. What you have to remember is that everything works. Every single thing works. If you're going to work for sale bounders, that's all I did the first three years I was in real estate. There's a gentleman named Fro Candelar that his entire business model was he would knock on doors from Monday through Friday from nine until noon. And his entire conversation was, hi, you want to sell your home? No, nope. here's my card. Call me when you do. He listed 900 homes a year, didn't use the MLS, double-sided 80% of them. That was his entire business model. And here's the reason that I, I bring this up because what we're talking about, what Andy's talking about, and really taking it away from, from one particular, but to a generalization, whatever you do, if you, this I heard clearly, Andy, you can't be a musician and a realtor. You've got to be 100% in with what you're doing. That doesn't mean that it, it, it takes your time later on in the evening, but your focus, your work, the truth is, and I hate to say this, I'm calling you all out, myself included, who here, you know, raise, raise your hand internally. You don't have to raise your hand. Who here is putting in six or seven hours a day working aggressively to build and generate more business, more leads, more make the systems work and be 100% focused? I'm not saying a full work day, okay? You don't have to answer that, but think about that. If you did, what would happen to your business? It could be for sale banners, expires, withdrawn, circle prospecting, door knocking, uh, social media done properly where you're working six hours a day to build a, an entire thing. Maybe, I don't know, a set like Andy has behind him that's built on purpose, right? Yes. You know, and, and, and a lot of time to do that. Got his, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so much involved in picking your lane and then going hard at it. And, and I've got to have, I got to make sure everybody got that. Yeah. Yeah. George, I, I like what you said there, because listen, I'm not trying to talk shit about like open houses or different strategies. Here's, here's what I really mean by this. Okay. There's always going to be a plateau on that. This is what I learned and figured out. Okay. There's going to be a plateau on stuff. I'm going to give you a, a, an analogy, right? Or metaphor, whatever the hell it is. A donut shop. Okay. Let's say you open up a donut shop. Okay. Just a standard 900 square foot little donut shop. Okay. You could only make so much out of that one little donut shop. Maybe let's just call it a hundred thousand dollars per store. You're going to have to open up a thousand of those to make a lot more money. Right. What about a jewelry shop? You open up another jewelry shop could even be 900 square feet as well. That jewelry shop has a 10 times more potential or five times, whatever it is, right. You could make half a million dollars out of that jewelry store for the same square footage, for the same amount of time, same amount of effort, same amount of work. Work, okay. I want you to really understand that. Okay. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a ceiling and a plateau that you can do for each different niche, each different business, each different category. Every single one is going to depend on the market. Maybe the trend is donuts. Okay. Maybe everybody loves donuts now. So you're going to make more money eating donuts. But what happens when it flips to, I don't want to eat sugar anymore. That's that's the trend going on right now. It's all about like healthy living. You're not going to make as much in a donut shop. You're going to make more in a, in a healthy smoothie shop, okay? So you have to go where the market goes. The market's going to tell you where it's going. You have to listen to it, okay? That's what I'm saying that, you know, before about like, oh, open houses aren't the best thing to do. Because I know, you know, I know a lot of people teach open houses and they're great. And like I said before, you can make good money doing it. If what George said, 
100% accurate, 100% true. If you put all your time and effort and, and, and George, I think people need to put a little bit more than eight hours a day uh, running your own business because guys, I want to tell you this right now. Okay. I want to tell you this and listen very clearly to me. This is not a nine to five job. You're not doing a nine to five job. You don't have a boss breathing over your neck. You're not clocking in nine o'clock, clocking out at five o'clock. It's not what you're doing here. And if you're not successful, that's why, because you're treating it like a nine to five job. Once I flipped the script on that and said, you know what? I'm my own boss. I'm an entrepreneur. You have to treat it like your own business because it literally is your own business. Nobody is telling you what to do. Nobody's saying, oh, did you clock out at, at, at 6.30 p.m.? It's not happening that way. You're literally an entrepreneur running your own business. If you don't treat it that way, you're never going to succeed. So I personally do not think eight hours is enough unless you're up there making $500,000, 250 grand a year. Once you hit that point, you can start changing things to scale even further by hiring agents and stuff. I'll talk about that in a little bit because that's what I did this year. I started scaling by hiring agents and building a team and everything. So that is possible. But for the first few years and every single successful, and I, I do a podcast and I interview CEOs, CFOs, multimillionaires. I interview, I've interviewed dozens of them at this point, and they all literally say the exact same thing. They grinded it out for the first few years. Some of them longer. Some of them grinded it out for five, 10 years, okay? But most of them, they have grinded it out for the first few years. They literally suffered and they put away their pride, okay? And they did whatever the hell they had to do to get it done, okay? That's what I want to really you know, get my message across here is yes, if you want to be very successful, you will have to sacrifice, you have to make sacrifices in your first few years of doing this. If you're not where you want to be, that means something's wrong. You're doing something wrong. Okay. If people like me, people like George, people like uh, Ricky Carruth, you know, can make a half a million, a million dollars per year. Why can you not do it? Okay. We're no better than any one of you. Okay. We just did the things that you did not want to do. That's it. That's all we did. We put in the time and effort where you said, oh, I'm too lazy. I'm going to turn my phone off at five o'clock at night. I'm going to take off Saturday and Sunday. That's all great and well. You could take off a Saturday and Sunday after you started making a half a million dollars a year. Now you can start taking off a Saturday and Sunday, but you have not earned that right yet. Okay. You didn't earn the right to stop taking calls at seven o'clock at night. You have not earned the right to do that yet. Okay. So I want to make that very, very clear. Put in the time and effort it takes to get rich for a few years first, then things get much, much easier. Okay. Much easier. Like right now, I'll give you guys an example, right? I'm still working 16 hours a day. And that's what I did. And year number two, I bumped it up to about mm, 10 to 12 hours a day. Year number one, I was only working five hours a day, maybe five days a week. But that's why I only made $80,000. Okay, I didn't make that much money doing that. Once I started working more, then I bumped it up. I literally like almost 5X it, whatever it is, three, three, four X it, right? And then the year after that, I was like, what if I work 16 hours a day, nonstop around the clock? When I'm awake, I'm working. When I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, right? I tried doing that. Guess what? Boom, made half a million dollars. Doubled what I did the year before that. And do you think it's because I'm I'm a genius? No, no. Listen, yeah, maybe I'm sharp and everything, right? But it's because I put the time and effort and I did my homework. Like George was saying before, I built that set behind me. Do you think that just happened overnight? No, I had to research those LED lights. That took me hours of just researching and setting them up. The camera that I'm talking to right now, I had to do multiple, like dozens of hours just to learn how to work this stupid camera, right? You know what I mean? Like, guys, come on. You know, uh, you really have to be um, motivated and you really have to be, uh, you know, uh, willing to learn and to make mistakes and then fix your mistakes and learn from your mistakes. Because that's another thing I want to say too, right? I've encountered so many problems. George has encountered so many problems. George has been doing this for, for way longer than me. Okay. He knows what it takes. And we're talking specifically real estate right now. Every single deal you're going to do in real estate, you're going to make a mistake. I don't care what the heck it is. You might forget to call them at five o'clock and call them at five ten. Boom. That's a mistake. Whatever it is, right? You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be problems that you're going to have to solve. You cannot get discouraged by these problems. Problems are literally inevitable. Okay. So I changed my two this was probably a year, year and a half ago. I changed my tune uh, and I was like, all right, I'm getting upset uh, every single problem I have. It's putting me in a bad mood. Let's say I, I have a, a $15,000 commission deal, right? And let's say a half a million dollar house, whatever the heck it is. And all of a sudden, Day, like 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 the day before the closing, I lose the deal. Okay, nothing I can do to solve it. You know, it just it just goes kaput. Okay, I would get upset. This was before, right? Previous previous Andy over here. I'll be moping around for like a week at a time. I'd just be upset. You know, oh my god, why me? Why me? You know, why this happened to me? I didn't take accountability. Okay, at some point somewhere along the way, 
I did something wrong, okay? And I don't know what that was. I did something wrong. So, you know, listen, guys, you can't get upset about problems. I discovered a new philosophy about problems. Let me let me tell you, tell me, let me tell you this one. This is it's pretty cool. So every time I have a problem now, here's my, here's my uh, you know, uh, outcome to this is yes, please give me another. Okay. Yes, please, being I love that I'm getting a problem right now and give me another because I get to fix this problem and then move on to my next problem to solve that. And who am I solving this for? I'm solving it for myself. Okay. I'm showing myself that I can do it. And that's that's a very fulfilling feeling. Once you conquer a problem, you will feel like you're on cloud nine. You'll like, you'll, you got, I'm sure everybody can relate to this. When you guys have like a really hard problem, even take it back to like school days doing algebra and this and that, right? If you get to the end of that equation and you solve it, you're Andy. like relieved. You're like, oh, yes. Uh, George, hang, yeah. Hang tight. Dude, somebody's playing some music. Was that you? Not me. Oh my God. I couldn't find it. I don't know where it came from. Somebody was just hitting some music real hard. I was trying to get it know. muted out. They're probably at the gym or something, right? <laughs> probably working out at the gym, running. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, which is which is very good too. You know what I mean? You guys need some kind of balance. I'm I'm actually happy that happened, right? Because uh, hey, even just thinking that about also that, like, has a question. So let's let's let her get. Yeah. Yeah. What time is it? Do I? How how long do you usually go for? <laughs> Till nine thirty, right? I mean, I could take some questions now. I can keep, yeah. you know, yeah, right. Right. Lizette's got one. Let's go with Lizette real quick. Lizette, what you had your hand up? What's up, on? Yeah, yeah. I was actually, I, I usually, by the way, you're saying all this, but the same thing. I usually get on my phone calls now. We're going to get off to make my phone calls 9 to 11. We've had to double down. And I just want to put this out there. You're like exactly what you said. A lot of us, a lot of the new agents that I see coming into the industry, um, like it takes grit, you know, like it's not, like you said, it's it like, you're just coming in. It's going to be double the work because you don't have a sphere. Yeah. You don't have, you have to build that. And even I'm like, I've, I'm resounding board people that have been in the industry for years and they've done well over the years. I mean, we're talking about lead generating in the morning and evenings, right? Sometimes finding that space in between of the craziness of being busy to even stop to lead generate because this is what it's going to have to take. But you know, that's I'm actually, just before I forget, that's that's a very good point that you just mentioned about lead generation. It's something I hadn't talked about before. And I'll let you uh, ask your question in a second. But listen, guys, what she just said about lead generation, that is a never ending thing. Literally never ending. You never stop lead generation. Every single day, you will be lead generating nonstop. It's, it's a nonstop thing. It's not it's not that, oh, oh I'm going to lead gen for you know four days in a row. I'm going to get a whole bunch of clients. I'm going to go close a couple of deals, then go back to lead generation. That's not how it works, okay? I'll even tell you a quick little story, then I'll let you... Uh, uh, ask your question. Uh, my girlfriend's sister, she's a real estate agent in Iowa. I said, okay, how are you doing this year? She said, ah, I'm going to make like 60 grand. I said, why are you going to make 60 grand? And she started dissecting her business, right? Because she didn't know why she was having a bad year. And the one theme that I found, you know, she's doing a couple of things wrong. The big one that I found was she said, okay, at the beginning of the month, I lead gen for about a week or so. I get all of my leads. I set them up on the search on the MLS. I go and take them to show properties. You know, she's working with buyers. And all of a sudden she stops doing lead gen. Once she gets all of her buyers, you know, then she starts working on the deals, doing the showings, writing the contracts, you know, get them on a contract and closing the whole deal. After the deal is done, all the deals are done for that month. She goes back to lead gen the very next month. The first of the month, she'll go back to lead gen again. I said, well, there's your problem right there. You stop doing lead generation for three weeks out of the, out of the month. You're only lead genning 25% of the year. Do you think you can run a successful business doing that? No, you can run a decent business doing that where you're going to make 60, 70, 80 grand a year, but you're not going to excel. You're not going to make it to the top. You're not going to scale that way. So, okay, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted no, to no, let people know about that. So, okay. which, yeah, what, what was your question again? No, actually, it wasn't a question. It was just, I was just affirming everything you've been saying because mm. I the, the thing is like, you know, if you're doing open houses, do it. And like, you know, don't go do an open house on Saturday, put two signs up and expect to, you know, you got to do it at a high level. And that's the thing that could be to a high level. So some of us yeah. here on this, you know, some people on our, in, in our sphere that started real estate, our, our coworkers, you know, they came from a nine to five job. So they would actually make sure they get dressed on time, put on that name tag. They look good. They I think you're cutting out a little $20 bit. An hour, whatever. Yeah. I think, I think you're chopping out a little bit, is, but. Can anybody else not hear oh, her? Sorry. Yeah, she, uh, George, can you, you hear, hear her? She's chopping, chop, getting choppy. It came through. It came, okay. Okay, sorry. So what I'm, look, I'm just you're saying that the fact that coming in at a high level for yourself, especially, in the, there's a lot to this. It's just, I one of the things I'm seeing, it's like when it comes to my business or doing this on my own, 
it's like, oh, I'm just going to go do this. And then we kind of like, we don't really push it to go like, the, I don't know how to explain it. Do it in a way where it's all in. That's really it. All in. And the thing with I'll the give you an example here. So, so, so what she's saying about that, right? Like I'm going to give open houses as an example, going all in on open houses, right? Like I said before, I don't think it's the best way to do lead generation right now. And it will, it will be, it might be the best, you know, or second best within a couple of years. But if you're doing open house, let's say that's what you like, because it's very important. You do something you love. Cause if you're lead generating every single day, you better pick a niche that you love. Maybe it's only third best, but you love it. So you're not miserable. So your quality of life is a little bit better. That's still okay. Right. At the end of the day, here's an example for open houses. What what she was talking about, right? So let's just say you're working on open house strategy. What do you want to do to get open houses? You want to reach out to the EXP network first, right? That that's our friends and family, right? There were a family right there. We literally have something called Zenlist where you can pop on Zenlist and see every single EXP realty agents listings off market or on market. You reach out to them, say, hey, I want to hold an open house for you. You stack up a few of these per weekend, not just one, not just two. You stack up a few open houses or throughout the week too, because you could do them on a Friday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It doesn't matter, right? Because think about this way. You could be working out of an open house. You can bring your laptop and everything. Even if it's not that busy, you only get one or two or three or four people show up. Who cares? You're going to be doing that anyways in your office or your at-home office. So might as well do it at an open house and get a potential to get leads, right? You can do some door knocking before that. You put up your 40 signs or 30 signs or 50 signs. You know, that's what you do for every single open house, but you do multiple of them. You don't just do one because that's half-assing it. That's not going all in. You cannot do a successful business doing one open house a weekend. Never going to happen. Never going to work. You have to do multiple. I talked to this agent that was making just same amount of money as me. And he was doing four, four or five open houses every single week, four or five open houses a week. I said, how'd you do that? He said, well, I'd hold the open house for like an hour and a half, give or take, you know, he had a whole schedule, you know, he would do it at nine 30 in the morning. He'd have somebody go and put the signs out for him. He would have somebody do the door knocking and hand out the flyers for him. And then he would show up to the open house, you know, and he would do his one hour and a half. Then he would have like a little half an hour gap, then go on to the next open house. Okay. I said, that's incredible. I said, how much money are you making? Oh, I made half a million dollars last year doing the strategy. I said, that's great. So I'm a new agent, you know, cause they didn't have a network or a sphere built up just like she had mentioned before. So guys, you can still do other lead gen strategies. I don't want to talk shit about other lead gen strategies because you can still do them. Uh, you, you might just have a little plateau of how much money you can make based on the market circumstances, but you can still make a lot of money. So listen, maybe you won't make, let's just say, you know, working with renters, you'll make half a million next year, working with Fizz you'll make half a million next year, but working with open houses, maybe you only make 350 or 400. Okay. For a lot of people, that's still good enough. All right. You know, so that's, that's what I mean by that. Okay. Cause I'm, listen, guys, I am extremely OCD and efficient. Okay. Uh, I have crazy time management and crazy efficiency. I literally use clipboards on my phone and my computer and this and that. Like I literally make things as efficient as possible. So when I talk about maximizing lead generation, I want to be utilizing my time the best way I possibly can. Money producing activities at the highest dollar per hour, right? If you could be working for a thousand dollars per hour doing one lead generation strategy or working at, let's say, $500 per hour doing one lead generation strategy, which one do you think you're going to want to choose? Probably the one doing $1,000 per hour compared to the one 500. You're spending the exact same amount of time making double the money. Does that make sense, guys? I really hope that makes sense. But there is a caveat to that, right? Only if you like it, okay? And in the beginning, you know, you don't have to like love, love, love what you do. I love real estate, at, you know, in general, uh, but there's other things I love a little bit more, which I wanted to talk about teams and YouTube. I know George wanted me to talk about YouTube. So let me pop into that right now because I'll be honest, guys, I found something I love even more than real estate and that's YouTube. <laughs> uh, who would have guessed it, right? Literally a few years ago, if you had told me I'd be on a YouTube channel, I'd be like, you're out of your goddamn mind. There's no way I was afraid of public speaking. I was like, no, sir. There's no chance I'd be going in front of a camera like I'm doing right now. You know how weird it was me talking to a camera for the first like couple weeks? It was so strange and weird. I was like stumbling over my words. I wasn't talking like this right away, right? Um, but I learned it and I actually learned to love it because it's fun. For me personally, I love the content creation portion of it, right? I get to be creative. I take nothing and turn it into something. And that's honestly what real estate agents do as well. You're taking a nothing business and you're turning it into something. That's why I did also love real estate, but I found that I can give back at such a higher level and scale when I go on YouTube. So anybody can do the exact same thing as me. Let's say you get really good at open houses and you become the master, the expert at open houses. 
Well, after a few years doing that, you made a whole bunch of money, right? Now you can start giving back and start sharing what you learn to other agents to try to help other agents, right? That's disgusting. Seeing a 90% failure rate, that literally makes me sick. There's no reasons why our brothers and sisters out there should be failing at that high of a rate. So that's why we give back information. Once you've mastered something, it's your duty and obligation to give back. That's the way I feel as a human society. That's how we grow and that's how we excel. That's why we're still not in the stone ages, guys. That's why we're in 2024 coming up with AI and all this future stuff and Elon Musk. That's why we're doing this because we help each other, okay? So I realized that at the beginning of this year and I started a YouTube channel. I started going on Instagram. I started a coaching program to give back to agents that teach them how to do this. www.richwithrentals.com. Check it out, guys, later. The YouTube channel that I'm doing right now is literally giving all of my knowledge and info to all the new agents or the struggling agents. Any agent that's not making half a million dollars a year, they should be listening to my advice. Maybe they're not going to take my advice, but they should at least hear me out and see what I have to say, see if it makes sense to them, and then give it a shot if it does, right? So that's why I like doing that right now is giving back. And guys, I built a team too, and any single one of you can build the team as well. That's the beauty of real estate, what I found, right? In the very first few years, yes, I was doing well and everything. Number two agent, you know, uh, did a lot of deals, 250 deals that year. That's all great and, and, and very good and everything. But I was like, well, how do I scale? If I just do it again this year, maybe I'll do... 300 deals. Maybe I'll make, you know, 650,000 this year, but uh, my, my, my plateau, I'm starting to peak, right? There's only so much I can do in my 16 hours a day as an individual agent. Yes. My network's going to grow and everything, but I don't have time to handle all these deals. I literally don't. I, I would have to turn down deals. I don't have the time for them anymore. So I said, what do I do? How do I problem solve this? Well, duh, I create a team. I get some other agents in there. I get VAs. I have like two VAs right now, about to bring on a third VA. I'm about to hire an assistant. I'm about to, to build an office. I have three agents working directly for me. I have multiple agents under my downline right now. I think just like 10 right now or something like that because now I need help. I need help, okay? I cannot do this alone. Yes, I can do it alone, but I'm never going to scale that way. That's the beauty of doing real estate, right? You don't have to do it alone forever. Yes, you do have to do it alone in the beginning, right? If you start hiring agents when you're making $50,000 a year, what kind of confidence do you think you're going to inspire in them? You're going to inspire a zero confidence. Their loyalty is going to be zero and you're not even going to be able to train them and teach them well. You're not going to be able to answer their questions. It's never going to happen, right? So that's why you want to actually grow first. You want to reach the level that you want to reach, right? Me personally, that was the 250 deals. That was half a million dollars. I was like, once I reached that, then I can go and bring on other agents. And then that gives me the credibility and the confidence because that's very important, right? You need the confidence to go out there and lead because that's what you're doing. When you have a team, you're leading. George, he's a leader. He's a born leader, but it didn't happen overnight. He didn't start leading in year one. George, what did it take you? Probably a few years to actually get a team and start leading. You know, you had, he he did the work first. He did the Fizbo's first, you know, for three years, he said. Then he was like, all right, I've mastered this. I'm making a whole bunch of money now. I can now go out and teach agents because I'm so experienced right now that they will listen to me and they will, I will lead by example. So that's the beauty of doing real estate at a high level. You don't just have to do it forever. I know agents that have been doing this for 20, 30 years. And if that's you, no offense, right? If you love doing real estate, fantastic. Whatever you love to do, whatever's like, you know, your happy place, you know, if you love doing the showings and you love writing the offers, fantastic. Keep doing that, right? Not everybody wants to lead. Not everybody wants to create a team. That's a whole different burden and different amount of stress that a lot of people don't even want, literally don't even want it. If you gave it to them, they would give it back to you because they don't want it. That's what makes the world go round because everybody is different. But if you want that, right? If you want that, if you're like, oh, that sounds cool. Let me get a team. You know, let me try to scale. You know, I can handle the pressure and the stresses and the anxiety of doing this. Then that's what you have to do. Become the expert first. Then you could lead a team. So George, um, uh, was there any questions that anybody wanted to ask me? I know we have like 15 nope. minutes left. We No, we're good on that. If they're raising their hands as they're going. So I have a, something that I wanted to bring up. When you're going through all of this, obviously you're you're very high energy. There's no question about that. And you it's do coffee. it. What, right, there you go. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure by mind today, I did not go get it. But how many hours a day do you personally work now in the real estate specter, sector, not in the in the YouTube sector? How many hours a day are you now committing to that? In your, if you could share it. Jeez, um, that's a great question. I actually have not broken that down in a while. 
Um, I used to, the last time I tracked this, it was about five hours, four hours, something like that. Probably about four or five hours. The last time I tracked it, right? Um, so I don't, I really can't remember when that was. Uh, but I'll tell you some stats, though, if you want. For, for those four or five hours, I believe I was making about 30 to 40 grand per month just off of real estate, working those four or five hours. So basically very, 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 very similar to what I was doing last year. You know, I think last year I was making like 42 and a half or yeah, $42,500 on average per month. And I'm making a very similar amount, but I was working 16 hours a day in real estate doing that. And now I'm working, you know, maybe it was like four to six hours, whatever it was uh, to make that almost same money doing that. Right. Uh, and that's because I have the team now. So now I've, I've done, I've changed a lot uh, in, in the past few months since I tracked that. So I couldn't even tell you. I'd have to go back and figure that out. But you, I think that's the general point that George wanted to really uh, get at, right? Like, like I said before, I was working 16 hours a day, you know, in the beginning, but then now I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to, like, I guess I, I could probably do it if I wanted to, but now I'm spending, you know, another four hours on YouTube, another four hours on Instagram. And I don't, I don't spend that much time on YouTube, <laughs> but I do, I do like podcasts like this, you know, training seminars, I go speak on stages, you know, I'm writing a book right now. Uh, yeah. I'm doing a lot right now. I'm doing a ton of other stuff that I love doing. I I literally wake up every single day with a massive smile. I jump right out of bed. I go to bed. I fall asleep right away. No anxiety, no stress. And like, I'm thrilled to wake up the next day because I'm doing so many cool things. I have a meeting with Leo Pareja. Uh, Leo Pareja. I think that's uh, the chief uh, strategy officer. Okay. I have a meeting with Michael Valdez, the chief uh, growth officer of EXP Realty. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, right? I'm doing these awesome, amazing things now. But guess who put myself in that position? It was me. I literally did the things that other people would not do, didn't want to do, didn't know how to do, refused to do. And now I'm in the position that I'm in because of that. I think I think that hopefully answered your question, George. Yep. So um, kind of putting a bow on this because it's something that, uh, you know, you were real, 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 real committed to. And it's, it's it aligns perfectly with how we do these. Um but I'm going to break the rules because I think that there's an opportunity here. So, and I'm, I'm, uh, I know that you're not, this is not a topic conversation that you're, uh, that you had planned on discussing. Tell us a little bit about the uh, open or excuse me, the, uh, the rental course that you have. Give us a, a, just in, in a minute or two, some kind of context to what's involved in there. Uh, we talked about some of the successes, which was great because that's important. But you know, like, what's the cost and uh, what what's the expectations? Because there are some still people on here. And by the way, if 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 this isn't for you, this isn't a sales pitch. I just want everybody to know what is out there as an opportunity. Uh, and I'm breaking my own rules because we never sell anything. And he's not selling. I'm actually just <laughs> interested. So tell me a little yeah, bit about the the content of this, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, George. Uh, listen, I, I don't, I truly don't even have to sell. I don't, I don't care. I don't give two fucks if anybody buys it or not. I really don't care, right? If, if you want to change your life and make a lot of money, you'll buy it. Okay. The only reason why it wouldn't work is if you didn't listen to me or you're not putting the effort in. That's a fact. I've, I've, like I said before, I've tested this with fifty plus agents. I think at this point I'm at like seventy agents, and they're all making a killing. They're all making a ton of money. Okay, so I don't, I truly don't have to sell, and I truly don't care. If you want to change your life, you'll buy it. If you don't want to change your life, don't buy it. Go buy somebody else's course or program, right? And first of all, I hate that word course for some reason. I don't like that word. Uh, so I, I particularly call it a coaching program because I'm basically just going on there and I'm doing 12 one hour sessions per week. It's just Wednesdays at 12 uh, PM EST. And I'm giving everybody a group call with me so they can literally ask me whatever the heck they want. And trust me, everybody has a lot of like fun, cool questions for the group. And then I share what I learned that's new. You know, we celebrate our wins. I share what I've learned that's like new and exciting. Uh, like I just came up with another apartment location, like like little tweak to my strategy. So last week I shared that, you know what I mean? Actually, no, I didn't get time to share it, but I'm going to share it this week. Um, but I'm sharing that kind of stuff, right? So the whole entire program itself, it's just richwithrentals.com. You can go on there. You know, I have a, a, a front page basically, which has all the information. Then you click on learn more info, and then you can see everything that's included, everything that you get literally and like an easy to read step-by-step -step little bullet points of exactly what you get and a little preview of, I call it a membership area. For some reason, I hate that word course. I just, I just don't like it. There's a bad stigma behind that because i'll tell you guys i'll be honest if you were to tell me again i would be teaching agents doing a coaching program you know last year i was so against that kind of stuff i said why would i pay somebody to learn what i can learn on my own right why would i do that it doesn't make sense to me then i realized <laughs> wait a minute official well yeah well, i realized i realized 
well, I went to college, right? I spent what 30 grand a year in college. Okay. Got out of college with a hundred thousand dollars of debt. Not me personally, my parents, my parents helped me out there, but a lot of people do. Uh, so yes, that is something natural. Okay. But then here's the, here's the big thing that I really realized, which got me into this, um, was, oh my God, wait a minute. I spent tens of thousands of hours doing trial and error, failing, 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 learning new different things. But if I had just had the blueprint right away, I could have saved those tens of thousands of hours. I could have saved that stress and anxiety. I could have saved a lot of time and time is impossible to get back. That's the one thing in life you will never get back is your time, right? So listen, I'll give you a good analogy, right? If you can give me $10 to make $100 next month, would you do it? Yes, every single human being would do that, right? Because that's a fair trade, not even a fair trade. That's a great trade for you. You're trading 10 bucks for a hundred bucks. That's what I equate my coaching platform and program for. You give me 10 bucks and I'll give you a hundred dollars return in your first 30 days. Now, listen, those are just hypothesis type numbers right there. Um, but that's, that's the general gist what I'm getting at. Right. So basically if you can, let's say do it on your own, right. And you can, every single one of you can do it on your own. Do not get this twisted. A hundred percent of you can do this on your own. You don't need me to do this, but I guarantee you this. And I promise you, this, this is a promise. You will not, you will not make as much money as fast as if you learn directly from me. That's an absolute fact of life right there. It's impossible. It's literally impossible because you did not do it yet, okay? I've done it. I've made all the mistakes. I've done 700 deals. You're getting 700 deals of experience and knowledge. So you're not gonna repeat those same mistakes. How could you possibly make as much money as me that fast? It's impossible. It cannot happen because you're going to make those mistakes. You don't know what you don't know. Mark Cuban always says that on Shark Tank. I love Shark Tank. He says it on Shark Tank all the time. You don't know what you don't know, okay? And trust me, guys, there's still a lot of things that I'm learning right now, but I'll tell you this for a fact. I'm a master at rentals. I am I am most likely the number one expert on rentals on planet Earth. There's no human alive that has done more rental deals than me in this short of a time period. Nobody ever in the history of real estate, the, the hundreds of tens of millions of real estate agents that have ever been alive, nobody has done more than me in this time frame. I can I can claim that right now. Okay. So why would you not? want to learn from me and trade your $10 for a hundred dollars. Why would you not? Okay. So if you don't want to, great, that's on you. Okay. Nothing to do with me. Right. But if you want to fantastic, then you'll learn, you'll make a lot of money. You'll be more successful in life. You'll be happier in life because you have less stress and anxiety. But if you don't want to, that's on you. Okay. So uh, it's richwithrentals.com, www.richwithrentals.com. Go and check it out. If it's for you, if you think it's a good fit, sign up. If you don't think it's a good fit, don't sign up. I do recommend coaching or you know other platforms though because if you want to learn that is it's a cheat code it's a shortcut so maybe you don't like the rental strategy so go seek out you know another person that's teaching something else maybe you want to learn open houses so go pay somebody else to teach you how to do open houses do whatever you love to do okay that's that's very important i personally i loved rentals i thought it was amazing right uh, and i'll tell you why i love rentals okay I get to work with these renters and nine out of 10 agents will literally turn them down. They'll say, nah, I don't want to work with you. Even if it's their listing, they won't even pick up the phone. So right then and there, they have appreciation. These renters are appreciating what I'm doing for them. Okay. And then the joy, I'll never forget this. I'll never, ever forget this. It was Christmas Eve of 2024. Uh, sorry, 2019. And all of a sudden I had this, it was my first client. They could, I could not get them into a rental because it was my very first deal. It's taken me like maybe two weeks, three weeks, right? Uh, finally, I got them accepted. And Christmas Eve, I moved them into their new home. Like their lease was literally like expiring like that next day. And it was either like do or die for them, right? They were either going to be homeless. It was a family. It was, it was actually um, a Mexican family, Mexican couple. So they were like immigrants, you know, and you know, they, they barely spoke English and like, they didn't have like a social security. It was a very, very tough deal for my first one, they had three children and the look on the parents' faces when I got them into that home, I think I started to cry. Okay. They had tears in their eyes. I think I started to get really emotional too. Their children were running around the, you know, the, the townhouse at that point, they were running around the townhouse. Oh my God, we got a home finally, you know, cause they were stuck in a condo before. And I made that happen for them. Okay. And they're, 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 they're clients of, 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 you know, for, for life, I will have them as clients for life. Cause they'll always remember what I did for them. And guess what guys, they bought with me. They bought with me. I think it was last year, maybe six months whatever it was, right? They bought with me, okay? Uh, so that's the beauty of it too. These renters will turn into buyers. Now, typically I think it's about 30% of renters will buy in the next, like, I don't know, one to two 
few years, whatever the stat is. So they will eventually buy. As long as you stay top of mind, like George said before, he teaches database CRM. I'm not an expert at that. I know how to do it and I know how to use it and stuff because I listen to experts like George and I learn from experts like George. Uh, but yes, I stay in touch with people and my renters turn into buyers, okay? Especially when the market flips over. When it flips to a buyer's market, woo, oh my God, I'm going to be filthy rich, okay? But if you think I'm making a lot of money now, forget it. I'm going to make millions, millions per year just off of my renters turning into buyers once the market flips because I've done over 700 deals. That's 700 VIP clients I have. Plus I have a database of 15,000 emails. Let me say that one more time. I have a database of 15,000 emails in my last three and a half years of real estate. Okay. Uh, George, how long did it take a normal agent to get a 15,000 list database without, without running, you know, any kind of like, like, like specific paid ads, you know, on like, on like, you know, uh, Google or whatever. Years, years and years and years. Maybe yeah. what, 30 years? Yeah. Oh God. It, it, that's actually very realistic. It's not un, it's not unrealistic. If you had 500 people a, um, a year, that's an incredible addition to a database that 15. And I, I think it'd probably take more than that. I, I don't know anybody yeah, that does yeah, it organically yeah, yeah. that have to be even close. Yeah. Yeah. Organically Facebook marketplace, 15,000 in three and a half years. You know how valuable that database list is right now, guys, come on. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's just so many amazing aspects to doing rentals. And I charge a $300 transaction fee. So let's just say in your market, oh, you might only make 300 bucks for a deal, 500 bucks for a deal, you know, 800 bucks for a deal. Well, you tack on that $300 transaction fee, which I teach everybody how to do and handle objections on that as well. I have a 99.7% success rate. I think I've only lost three transaction fees out of 700 plus deals. So do the math on that, right? I'm very good at teaching how to get the transaction fee. So even if you're only getting, let's say $500 per deal. Wow. That bumps it up to $800 per deal. You could even charge more. I've had, I've had agents that I've taught. They're charging 400 bucks. They're charging 500 bucks, you know, and they're getting it. Okay. I don't feel comfortable doing that because I get half a month's rent commission. So on average, I make $2,000, uh, you know, average commission. So I don't feel comfortable charging more than 300, but if you're not, maybe you will feel comfortable charging four or 500 bucks. Okay. I've had agents tell me they've charged $800, a thousand dollars before for a rental deal. It's not uncommon for a purchase. And at the end of the day, when you have, let's say a $9,000 moving cost, 3,000 first, 3,000 last, 3,000 security, what the hell is an extra few hundred bucks? It's a very, very, very tiny minor percentage, maybe what, like four or five, 6%, you know, on top of that, that's way less of a gratuity that you give to, let's say a waiter, you know, you don't give a waiter 5%. They would look at you sideways if you gave them 5%. So um, that's the whole philosophy behind it, right? You can do rentals now and make decent money, even if you're not making the 2000 that I'm making right now. If you're making only, let's say 800 bucks, you can make decent money, right? If you do 10 of those in a month and there's no reason why anybody here, anybody here cannot do 10 rental deals a month. If if I trained you and you go through my whole program and you come on my weekly calls and you ask your questions and you put the time and effort in, and honestly, for 10 deals only, remember, I could do 30 deals in a month alone. That's working 16 hours a day. You can easily do 10 deals a month working eight hours a day. That's That should be child's play at only working eight hours a day. Probably, honestly, probably less. You could probably get away with working less just to two 10 deals. Even if you're only making 800 bucks a deal or 500 bucks a deal, that's five to eight thousand dollars per month of extra money that you have coming in what about the referrals the friends and families all of these people these renters that are getting these rental deals from you they're going to be like oh my god i just got into a rental place where no other agent wanted to help me here's my my agent andy coleman he's going to do you you know wonders he's going to get you into a rental. i get referrals all the time and sometimes they want to rent and sometimes they want to buy okay i still do purchases i do five to ten purchases per year i think this year i did like eight purchases or something like that i'd have to look you guys can look me up in the MLS and see what I did. I did a, a $3.4 million house sale this year. Okay. Made $85,000 commission, $85,000 on one deal. You know what, you know how that feels. And, and where do you think you all know where they where, where that, where that person came from? It came from a renter of mine. Okay. I did two rentals with him. I think I made like 10 grand on one of the rentals he did first rental. I think I made like three and a half grand it was like the biggest rental I'd done up to that point. And then like the second biggest rental up until that point, it was in like the very beginning. And he remembered me, he hit it big, you know, he's doing really well in his business. And then he was like, all right, I want to buy a $3.4 million house. So who do you think he used? He used me and I made $85,000 commission. I'm an icon agent. So I kept all of it minus 200. 50 bucks. I literally kept the whole thing. Okay. Uh, that was incredible. I literally, that was like the, one of the best moments, you know, of my real estate career of hitting that milestone. But that's just what I'm saying, guys, 
You can literally work with renters now and then turn them into buyers later or midway through. A lot of my renters are going to be like, oh, well, I have $30,000, $40,000 saved up, you know, so first class and security is not a problem for me. So I say, wait a minute, you have all that money saved up. Well, what if you do this, 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 and this? You could actually buy a home right now, right? I teach, I teach that too, of how to actually transition them. Now, listen, it's not actually, it doesn't make sense right now to buy a home. It's actually cheaper to rent right now at the seven and a half, whatever we're at for the interest rates right now. It's literally because the prices of homes are so high right now and the interest rates are so high and the inventory is so low. It literally does not even make sense to buy right now. So if I'm advising people to buy right now, they better have cash, okay? Uh, they better not be really spending too much on their interest rate because, listen, guys, it's tough right now. Yes, you could do like three, two, one buy downs and things like that. Um, and yes, you can refinance later. So if somebody is in, you know really set on doing it, I could say, yes, you can refinance later and you can get a cheap price of houses now because obviously, guys, and this is one awesome thing, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have a crystal ball, right? I'm gonna give you guys uh, the future of what's gonna happen over the next few years. Um, George, do I have time to give them um, a layout of what's gonna happen over the next few years? Uh, about two minutes at the most. Guys, I want to give you, I want to give you something cool. Okay. Um, so over the next few years, right, because we're talking about renters turning into buyers, uh, we're talking about what's going to be happening in the market. So what happens during an election year? Okay. Um, George, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you tell me what happens during an election year for, uh, rates for the federal funds rate, typically in mortgage they, rates, what usually without, happens without reservation, they go down. They shouldn't because I, I, in perfect world, we're not, there's no control over that. But it does every single time. I'm actually doing a full, I'm doing, as soon as we hang up, I'm doing a report on exactly that. The rates will go down. I expect will be in the high fives, low sixes by March or April. And that is going to open a flood of business. <laughs> Flood of business. I, I can't remember the actual stat. It's like every every one point it drops, like I don't know, three million people buy or something like that. Some some number like that, right? I'm sure George is probably gonna do a report on that. Um, so here's the whole point behind this, right? What happens when the mortgage rates drop? You know, obviously it's it's really kind of off the federal funds rate. There's no direct correlation, but that's typically how the mortgage rates follow the federal funds rate. There's no federal mortgage rate though. Uh, but let's say it does drop to that 5%, right? From the 8% we were at like last month. Well, it just dropped three points. Now we have 9 million or whatever the stat is, uh, new buyers that flood into the market. What's going to happen to the inventory? Inventory is going to go down even more. What's going to happen to the prices? Prices are going to go up even more. Okay. It's going to be very, 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 very bad for the housing market. Okay. Cause we have a problem right now. The housing market is literally broken right now. We cannot sustain high interest rates, high prices and low inventory. This is like not sustainable. Um, so it's going to mess up the entire housing market even worse than it is right now. But typically they do this, right? The, 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 the fed, you know, Jerome Powell, he's in office right now. Um, they do this because they want to get the current president reelected again. Okay. Obviously they do not want Trump to win. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to do everything in their power to try to get Biden elected again. Okay. That's, that's, or whoever is going to be the Democrat, right? They're going to try to get them elected again. So they want to get good favor with with all the constituents, you know, the voters, and they want to actually lower the rates so they get voted back again. So when this happens, the price of homes are going to go up, okay? So what does that mean for you guys? That means it's going to be a buyer's market. It's going to slowly switch over to a buyer's market just for a little bit, okay? So why why just a little bit, right? Uh, George probably said March, okay? And here, historically, it starts happening in March, April, May of the, you know, election year, 2020, 2016. 16, 2012, right? You get my point. Uh, and it will happen again in this year as well, 2020, or I'm sorry, next year, 2024. It's going to happen right around that time frame. you know, March, April, May, June, something like that. It's going to start dropping a little bit. Here's what happens. Usually it, it, it bottoms out right around October 1st, you know, September 1st, October 1st, uh, give or take, I think one of those dates, it's going to bottom out, right? It's going to, it's going to go to the very bottom of the mortgage rates. And then, and then it's going to stabilize right around that rate until the election happens on November 4th, I think it is, right? Uh, so after November 4th, whenever the election is, then what always happens, always like clockwork, George, what happens after the election happens? Rates go up. Rates go up, okay? Rates go up. It's like clockwork. You can literally just go look at a mortgage graph, you know, for the past 30 years. You can see it, okay? That's how I figure this out, obviously. Um, so the rates are gonna go back up. Guys, what's gonna happen when the mortgage rates go back up, okay? The price of homes are gonna go back down. The inventory is gonna start going back up again, okay? That is hopefully gonna be the correction on the market, okay? I personally think, I don't know what the heck the rates are gonna go for. If you guys remember in 1981, the rates got up to like 17%, some crazy nutty high number, right? I think it was the highest ever in history. 
I do not think it's going to get that high again. I highly, highly doubt that because I think America would go bankrupt. You know, we can't afford our debt if if, if rates go up that high. You know, nobody will be able to, to, to afford to borrow money and then our, our economy is going to plummet. So I don't think it's going to go up high like that again. I, I would like bet my bottom dollar on that. But I do think it's going to go up to maybe 9%, maybe back up to 8% maybe 10%. I don't know, right? I don't know. I don't know about that, right? I just know it's going to go up, okay? And it's going to stay up for a long time, however long it takes until the market corrects itself, until we we, we kind of want to replenish our inventory. Once we replenish our inventory, then they could be like, okay, inventory is back up again. Prices have normalized, stabilized. They've dropped you know, a, enough to where people can start coming back into the market and buying again. Now let's drop the rates, okay? To trigger the buyers to come back out again and then eat up all of that extra inventory that was just processed over the past like year or two, however long it's going to take. I think it's going to take one to two years of high rates. Uh, personally, I could be wrong on that, but I, it's going to be some time frame of higher high rates in 2025 and probably 2026. Maybe we'll see how the market handles that. And then they're going to drop the rates again. And then people are going to start buying again. It's literally a cyclical cycle. And it happens like clockwork, especially you could like, that's what I'm saying. During an election year, you can just time this to the T. Okay. Now anything can happen, right? Because we know, like George said before, in a perfect world, they would not do this. They don't want to drop the rates because it's going to mess the housing market up even more than before. But what does this mean for you guys and real estate agents? This means you know what's going to happen with the market. So you can plan for that now. You can literally start planning for that now. You know that the rates are going to be lower and in, in, in people's minds, it's going to be a good time to buy. But we know technically it's actually a better time to buy once the rates are really excuse me, uh, once the rates are really high, we know it's a better time to buy because you're going to get a cheaper price on the house. And then you can eat those high rates for a year, two years until they drop again. Because remember, it's a 30 year fixed mortgage. So what's one or two years out of 30 years, eat those rates, eat those payments if you can afford it and then refinance when the rates drop again. Ideally, the perfect buying scenario, that's what you do. You buy when the rates are really, really high, which goes against all of like the news articles and everything. It goes against conventional wisdom, but that's the optimal way to buy, especially if you're an investor and let's say you have a fund or something like that and you have cash when the rates don't matter. You never, ever, ever want to buy when the rates are really low if you're not actually getting a mortgage or a loan because at that point then it doesn't make sense because the price of homes are really high. You want to buy a house when it's really, really low. So even if you don't have unlimited cash and you have to take out a mortgage at 8%, or whatever it is, that's okay. You could always refinance later, okay, in a year or two. And then you'll get that cheap price of that home. So either if any of you guys want to buy a house, that's kind of how I would do it if you have the extra money to float that, right? Because then you'll get the best of both worlds. You'll get the cheap price of the house. Let's say a house costs $500,000, you know, when, when the rates are, let's say, 4%, right? And then they go up to 8%. That, that house price maybe goes down to 400000 or 450000 Then you get the house at that price at those rates. And then all you have to do is refinance at that 4 or 5% again, you know, in a year or two when they drop the rates. Because we know it goes in a cycle. It's always going to go up and down. Always, 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 you know. So we know that's the most optimal way to buy. So you could even instruct your clients that way too. Give them two options. Be like, listen, guys, if you got the extra cash, you can float this. This is the plan to do. Literally just explain that plan to them. But if you don't, then you do want to buy when the interest rates are really low because then you could actually afford to do it. If they can't afford to do it, then it doesn't really make sense. So you give them two options and you lay both of them out, right? You lay both options out. So this is how you're going to get buyers in the upcoming market, especially turning your renters into buyers. That's the strategy yeah. and approach that I am using. I think, I think I'm out of time, guys. Um, you, you so are, I, I just want to question it. on, on one, yeah. we're going to do one oh, question yeah, that's real important and uh, is it's a yes or no answer to this question for everybody out there. I, Andy's a, an icon again and again, because he does so many transactions and they're rental transactions. So it obviously begs the question that let's say uh, I'm, I'm here in Orlando and I, that's, I work out of the Orlando, Florida area and I'm a capped agent. I, I'm hundred percent capped and I need 20 additional closings that are transactional closings that qualify. Rentals qualify as icon status closings. Is that a yes or a no? An affirmative, correct? Oh yes. Hells yes. Every Hells single yes. person can be an icon. You may have to switch and say, okay, so I don't have maybe 20 more closings coming from here, but I can assist 20 more people, which is investing in 20 clients down the road who you're going to make a big deal on. 
And is there a dollar amount that you must receive in compensation for that to qualify? Do you know the answer? Hundred percent, hundred percent. So yes, it's uh, two hundred and fifty dollars twenty times, basically, or more times. Right. How much do does the commission have to be for it to qualify as a transaction? So it's it's uh, do the math with me right now. So it's two hundred and fifty dollar fee that you have to pay to EXP twenty times. Okay, or or like I said, one hundred and fifty thirty times. Right. Andy, how much commission do I have to receive for this to qualify as a closing? Do you know the answer to that? Let's, I do. Yeah, let's do the math on that, right? So let's just say you're getting a $2,000 commission as 20% of that says 400. That's too much. You don't need that. So let's say it's 1,500 times 20%. That's 300. Too much. You don't need that. So 1,250 times. I, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, um, but I'm, I'm I'm not doing it that way. I found it. So it's 1,250, okay? You need $1,250 of commission to hit that $250 mark, okay? And like I said before, you don't have to get that 1,250. If you make 800, you're just going to have to do it 30 times, okay? So instead of Got you know it. doing it 20 times at 250, you could do it 30 times at 180, all right? So the truth Does that the matter make sense? Is if I could, Andy, truth of the matter, what we're saying, let's say I received, because in Orlando, in Central Florida, we don't have a lot on this, but there's still an incredible value here. Let's say I charge a, a $500 transaction fee and there's a $500 commission. I make $1,000, which means only $200 goes in and I wouldn't get the full credit, but that's but that strategy works My commit because any transaction fee is an additional commission. And am I correct in thinking on that? hundred percent. And guys too, you could do apartments as well. There's an apartment locator strategy that I teach. So some of these MLS private, MLS private owners might only charge or might only give a commission of like 500 bucks, but some of these apartment complexes, especially if they're new, they are dying for business right now. Uh, there's a very, very low occupancy rate right now. So they're giving realtors a higher commission. So what you thought of a year ago, you're like, oh, this doesn't make sense for me to do this because the apartment location uh, system doesn't really pay realtors that much a year ago. That changes literally Literally every single month. So I teach a whole system of how you track that and, and basically find out how much they're paying because a lot of these will pay you half a month's rent commission. Some of these will pay you a full month's rent commission. Even if you're only getting $500 on average for like MLS private owners for these apartment locations, you might get a full month's rent. So if it's like a $2,500 rental, you're going to make $2,500 on that. Okay. So a lot of people get it twisted and think it's only one or the other. It's not. You can literally do a both. And I have multiple strategies to teach about doing the apartment locations and the MLS as well. So just keep awesome. that in mind. Awesome. All right, folks, we got to go. Andy, thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, you have been awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time. It is way past my prospecting time. Uh, <laughs> time for me to get back on the phone. Tiffany, I'll leave it to you for the after party. Andy, again, thank you. really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure You're you and I will talk in the next day or two, just because we usually do. Um, have an amazing day, brother. God bless you. Thanks again. And I'm out. Absolutely. Tiffany. Thank you guys. Yeah. guys. Thank you guys day. so much. You know, uh, mm -hmm. just, I'm just going to do this uh, really quick for YouTube breaks. I'm recording this. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching smash a like button, hit subscribe, and I'll catch everybody in the next one. Thank you. That was it. Okay. Take it away, Tiffany.